we were talking about artificial intelligence. And I was, uh, and I said that I thought that was a wonderful idea to have artificial intelligence because so many people don't seem to have any intelligence. At least we can say we got a computer that can think for itself because most people can't. And so I think, well, that's wonderful. At least we can make a machine that can think for itself. God made one and we can't figure anything out. So, uh, the whole idea of, a, of artificial intelligence is just pregnant with possibilities because it's not necessarily good. When you say uh, artificial intelligence, that means somebody is programming you to think what they want you to think. And so, my God, artificial intelligence, well, there's, a, there's another uh, avenue for Nazism, communism, Marxist-Leninist uh, Soviet communism, uh, that was an, uh, you know, a, a process by which government will tell you what to think and how to think, and uh, it's, a, it's a whole artificial intelligence that has nothing to do with truth and justice and decency and honor and human freedom. It's an artificial intelligence. So while on the one hand the idea of artificial intelligence sounds very interesting and very new age, uh, kind of uh, fascinating, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a popular subject. Uh, but on the other hand, it also reeks of Nazism, fascism, totalitarian uh, thinking, so that everybody must be in compliance with the new intelligence. So... That's why I think it would be interesting to follow on what we were talking about the last time. We just brought up the subject of artificial intelligence, but uh, I, I'm sure that uh, Jeffrey has found some some other good stuff to talk about in relation to that. So what have you got, Jeffrey? Uh, it's a pleasure to be back on the show again, Jordan. And, uh, wow, I'm, I'm, you're always showering me with uh, kind uh, words and so I'm really grateful. I think just in response to, to the, the, the intro that you mentioned is that, you know, the reason why I'm able to find certain factoids that, uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you found it interesting and I hope our listeners tonight, uh, will, 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 will have the same benefit as well is if it wasn't for your work, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for your, you know, Five decade plus sacrifice. I wouldn't be on the show tonight. You know, it's because of your work that I went down this path. So I have to extend, uh, you know, incredible kudos to you. Uh, but to get to our tonight's uh, topic, um, I'm delighted that you're sort of wanting to sort of continue with this because, you know, on a personal level, I think we could do you know five or six shows on this, and we could probably come up with original material on all four or five shows. Oh and yeah, no doubt be, about that. Be writing stuff, you know, those who want to search and those who want to sort of expand their own research, uh, there shouldn't be any shortage of material. Uh, so the first thing that I want to sort of touch on uh, is, you know. Today, you're talking about the government and communism and Nazism, and they tell you what they want you to think. Well, there's a Latin term, and some of you guys may uh, be aware of this, but for those who are not, it's parents portray. And I know you've mentioned this, Jordan, and it uh, it means parent of the nation. It's Latin. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, hold on. I just mentioned that in the hour just now, in the hour just before you. Oh, really? Yeah, I just mentioned that. I couldn't remember the exact term. I knew it was parent something. So explain that again, uh, what it means and what it is. Absolutely. So it's a Latin term. It's parens patriae. And uh, it's a P-A-R-E-N-S for the first word and P-A-T-R-I-A-E for the second one. And basically what it means is the parent of the nation or parent of the fatherland. And it re it's basically a law that refers to public policy. Again, I'm not a constitutional lawyer. Uh, I don't have a bad, I'm not an expert in anything. And uh, I would say it, not all of it, but the bulk of what I'm going to be mentioning you can find on the Internet and, and then go find your own uh, bottom line sources and expand your knowledge. But uh, uh, the Constitution, from what I understand, has basically been replaced with public policy. 
And uh, since the the the, the nation uh, is the fa- is the fatherland, and you know the the government is your parent, uh, that's why uh, you know that's why on forms the, your parents are legal guardians. Um, you know they don't say you know some of them will say mother and father, but you know in legal terms, if you end up in court, um, you know the legal guardian is a term that's not dismissed; it's actually brought to the forefront. So it's like a three parent uh, contract. You know there's there's the father which is the government, and they give you all the papers. They're the ones who give you your identity. They're the ones that give you the per- permission to get a driver's license when you're of age. They're the ones that give you permission to go to school, public school, um, you know, and then go make a vote public, you know, voting for, you know, for office or running for office, uh, all these things. It's all permissions. And so license, just all the stuff you mentioned in the past about license to get married and go get a fishing license and, uh, you know, you want to get a motorcycle permit and all this stuff. It's basically dad's letting you know that it's all right if you pass the test and you pay up. And, um, you know, you can see. Yeah, and, but legally they're called a parent. That's right. And so, uh, you know, this is basically one of the things, and I, I used to be really worried about this, but I, I just, I'm not anymore because it's such, it's new. It was new for me. It may be new for you. Uh, for those listening, but the idea of the government being your parent, it's, it's, it's old. And because it's old, there's nothing really to worry about. It's just an option to remind yourself that when you are part of a corporation, which is an artificial intelligence, it's your invisible dad is you know, the U.S. citizenship or Canadian or wherever you're from. Um, you are a participant on two levels in the real world with your real mother and father and you're participating as a citizen. And so because it's invisible and you can't shake hands with the United States, you can meet its representatives, they need to create an environment so that you feel like you're part of something that's not just a piece of paper. Because most people, if I were to say I, I have a country, it's called, uh, it's called uh, you know, white rabbit country, nobody's going to take me seriously. But if I have, you know, lawyers and I have judges and I have prisons and I have schools and I have money, I got lots of money. I got a printing press. Well, all of a sudden, people are going to be interested because then I can offer jobs. I can offer security and stability. So they need to provide an environment where it's serious. And that's where patriotism comes in. And patriotism is a psychological uh, <clears throat> mindset that's, you know, that's delivered into the minds of all, uh, all of its citizens, whether you accept it to a little bit or a lot. That's up to you and your family environment, you know. Uh, I've been to Fourth of July uh, uh, parties, and they're fantastic. I think it's incredible that America um, has patriotism. But in reality, uh, it's not its not really something that it's, you know, it's, it's more like a fun thing for most people. And also there's a component where people want to defend their country, which I respect. Because if you have a great place to live and you can raise your family, why not want to defend that? Who wouldn't? Uh, so I have respect for people who want to protect that. Um, but the reality comes down and it's all artificial. And this is where we're going to segue into artificial intelligence, where I really believe that corporations are uh, a, a major precursor, but at the same time, uh, the giant brain of each corporation is tied into other giant brains and they just keep tying them together over and over and uh, one of the things that I found is that it's just for fun if you go on the internet and you say uh, life on the hill I think if you type that in on the internet or YouTube it there'll be like little videos of interns from universities saying I have life on the hill well what's that well that's in Capitol Hill now, what's Capitol Hill? Well, that's Washington, D.C., and in Washington, D.C., that's where all the business happens. That's where all the magic for America happens, where all the policies are, are, are passed and all the money flows in and out and all the decisions are made for the military and so on and so forth. Well, Vatican, the word Vatican, if you look up the etymology, it means a mound or a hill. And to me, this is my opinion, but I personally believe that the Washington, D.C. and Capitol Hill is a financial corporate artificial intelligence franchise of the Vatican. 
It's just a kinky. I totally agree with you. Totally, 100%. Totally agree with you. And there's a lot more on that subject uh, on the web that people can go and listen to. Uh, authors, writers, researchers, lecturers on that subject. And I've talked about it before. <clears throat> So if you want to follow what uh, Jeffrey is saying, just go on the web to YouTube and type in on YouTube, type in the word U.S. is a corporation. Very simple. Type in the word U.S. is a corporation. And look at all of the uh, articles and websites <clears throat> talking about the very same thing Jeffrey's talking about but especially on YouTube, all the lectures and and uh, writers and authors and researchers who have looked into this artificial intelligence of the corporation and the company or the corporation called United States Corporation, <clears throat> and you'll find that we are not living, we here in North America are not living in the United States of America. We're living in a corporation that was incorporated in 1871. So it's a company now. It's not the United States of America, a republic, but it's a privately owned company <clears throat> called the United States Corporation. And in any big corporation, and this is a big one, any big corporation like uh, General Electric and Ford Motor Company and any big corporation, uh, the people who are working for the corporation, <clears throat> no matter what country they are in, no matter how many millions or thousands or tens of thousands of people who are working for that corporation, they can be in any country, but they're still employees. They have, uh, in corporations, they have things which uh, allow, they have situations which allow the general population of that corporation to once in a while vote on who they would like to see the next president of their corporation be. And so when people go to the polls to vote <clears throat> for the next president, they're not voting for a new corporation. They're, they're voting for who should run the new administration of the corporation. Mm -hmm. So the corporation is what it is, and you ain't changing that, period. <clears throat> and so what you're doing when you are going to the polls to uh, to uh, elect a president, uh, well, all corporations have a president. So what you're doing is you're just uh, you know, letting the powers that be, the secret powers behind uh, the corporation, the secret money people behind the corporation who founded it, let them know which uh, which one of their people <clears throat> that you particularly like. So therefore, when you are, they give you about five or six, seven different people who could be the president of the corporation. The the stockholders will agree to they could be the president of the corporation. <clears throat> well, who are the stockholders? Well, that you don't know. It's none of your business. Who owns the corporation called the United States? But the bottom line is, is that <clears throat> big corporations, uh, you could say, in a matter of legally speaking, uh, they have what is called a corporate democracy, meaning the corporation, which is all of the people working for the corporation, the company, uh, once in a while, every four years or every so often, they have the opportunity to vote on who they would like to see running their corporation. If they like the person that's been in there, fine, then just vote him back in. But if you don't like him and everybody in the corporation is of the same ideas or the, or the overwhelming majority is of the same idea, they're tired of this particular president <clears throat> and he's worthless, so get rid of him and put a different guy in, and maybe we can do something with the corporation. we got a different leadership. And so, therefore, you are now voting for a next president of the company. You're not voting for a different company. No, no, it's the same company. It's the same people who own it, the same people calling the shots, but you just are given the opportunity to feel like you have some kind of an input as to who the next president will be. But the bottom line is that the president merely represents the board of directors. 
And the, those board of directors are always, in every corporation, the guys who put up the money and founded the corporation, the guys who actually incorporated the company. So there's where the real power is. The, the, uh, the policy holders are the people who put up the money to found the corporation. They actually make the decisions for the corporation. The president is simply a corporate name and a corporate position in a, in a corporation. So in point of fact, it doesn't matter who the president is. It's the company and the owners of the company, the stockholders. And usually it's only a handful and they are the, are the predominant stockholders of the corporation. So the question you need to ask yourself, who are the actual stockholder owners of the United States government? There's a good question for you. Who actually are the stockholders of the original corporation incorporated in 1871? <clears throat> Who really owns the company that we call the United States Corporation that has its, uh, it, it has its home office in Washington, D.C.? Somebody owns that corporation. And we have a president and a vice president because in corporate law, you have to have a president and a vice president and the secretary and treasurer. So that's what we got. We got a president, the vice president, secretary, treasurer, but it's a corporation and nobody's going to change the corporation. We can merely, uh, if you want to, make it feel better. Every four years you can get a different administration of the corporation. But when you change the administration of the corporation, you haven't touched the corporation. You've just put a new guy in to represent the corporation. So, you haven't really done anything until you find out who actually, in fact, owns the the the, the shares and the stock holding shares of the corporation. Who are they, and where are they, and uh, why is it we've never been told that the United States after 1871 is no longer a republic? The United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. Well, that was good until after the Civil War. After the Civil War, no longer was there a United States of America. Why? Simple. Because the Civil War, a million people, close to a million people died uh, fighting each other within the United States. So we were anything but united. We were not a United States. We just came from a war in which we were killing each other. And so after the war was over, <clears throat> we've we've killed so many of each other. We've killed the North, killed the South, the South's killing the North. We are a lot of things, but United ain't one of them. So, all right, so what are you going to do with all of these people now that the war is finally over? Uh, well, you're going to have to do something because they're all hungry and they want to work and they want to eat. And, uh, and you've got <clears throat> millions of blacks from Africa who are here, and they're not going back. And you got all kinds of people coming from all over the world living here, and they're not going back. So what are you going to do with all these people if you don't have a United States of America anymore? We're not united. We're not united at all. <clears throat> well, the best thing to do is start a corporation, call it a company. And everybody works for the company, and that's the way we operate today. The United States is simply a corporation, a company, go on the web, and type in the word, U.S. is a corporation, and read it. It's all there. So that's basically what you were saying. I just wanted to clarify, we are no longer the United States of America with freedoms and liberty and justice for all and uh, uh, rights and, you know, the board of, uh, what do you call it, the Bill of Rights. We don't have any rights. <clears throat> if you work for General Electric, you don't have any right. You show up on time to go to work, and you and you take off when you're given time uh, for lunch, and you stay and work until the hour when you leave. You don't have any rights. You want to get paid? You want to work for the corporation? They call the shots, period. End of sentence. I'm glad you brought that up because... When you're an employee of a company, and I, you know, I have a feeling, you know, everybody out there is listening. They have a job, and um, or they've had a job at some point, and 
most companies they have a thing called a code of conduct. I, I know I did it when I was uh, uh, working. Uh, I worked at one uh, one place for 12 years, and they had a code of conduct. And the important part about everything uh, that's being discussed here is that it's a code. And a code is a militarized term. It's basically a language that, you know, you are supposed to learn and people outside aren't supposed to really fully understand. And <clears throat> like the Uniform Commercial Code and the Civil Code and all these other codes that are out there uh, that, that, that you know, you would take years to learn the code correctly. That's why they have to go to university and make you learn all this stuff. But going back to what you were saying earlier is that if you're an employee of a corporation, the first thing that the first things first, they only tell you what you need to know, and that's it. And they tell you the just exactly enough to operate. And uh, speaking of corporations, um, the mindset. And again, this is the, the the point that I didn't mention in our last call, and I wanted to bring up. I found it, I found it so critically important is that. And this has everything to do with artificial intelligence, and I'm going to segue into that. Is that the human mind, and this is my opinion, the human mind has the potential to be extremely good and extremely un, uh, uncaring. And it can do, and the human spirit can do a lot of bad things. And if someone's hurt or abused or taken advantage of, it just makes them feel like, well, other people are doing it, why don't I? And because war and competition and prejudice and bias are unfortunately out there rampant for hundreds and thousands, you know, thousands of years. It's been present all throughout humanity. And there's been a fight to make, try to have an honest living and try to do the right thing. Unfortunately, the, the, the other side of the psyche uh, is there. And so when you look at a, a president of a corporation, I used to ask myself and ask my teachers the question, why did they replace the president every four years? Why wouldn't they just, if there's one, you know, if someone makes it to president, the, that is the child's mindset that I had. Why don't they just keep the guy in and, you know, until he decides to, 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 you know, to withdraw? He's done his 12 or 15 years of service or, you know, why can't they just keep a good guy in there and run the show instead of always changing it? Changing someone every four years, that complicates things. But then if you look on the other side of the spectrum, well, you know what? Uh, corruption. I'm sure people out there must have know there's some there's some corruption going on, and corruption is the foundation of how to outcompete your competitors, how to outspy uh, your neighbor, how to out uh, outwit uh, your 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 enemy, uh, how to uh, 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 you know how to execute our world's economy. From my understanding, is called zero sum games. Someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. And that doesn't mean it's going to be fair and it's a Disney movie. It's going to be, I'm going to use corporate espionage. I'm going to uh, steal corporate data. I'm going to take advantage of my relationships with people and then lie in their face and then do deal backhanded deals. And then we're going to give it a fancy, fancy name. We're going to call it lobbying. And nobody will understand, and it's basically a, a sleight of hand for the mind. And yeah. so they have to have someone replaced every four years. And I was also thinking about it. I, I used to think, well, good, it'll protect. And then there's the other side of the spectrum. We'll, we'll, we'll protect the uh, American people if we get a bad apple in there. It's only for four years, thank God. Well, the reality is, is that every four years, no real good work can actually be achieved. In four, eight years is possible, but four years as a president, when you're running 300 million people, a country cannot be run real time. And this is where it comes into artificial intelligence. When President Trump comes in or artillery at one, doesn't matter which one, they are not actually running the country real time. They are operating off of laws that were established hundreds of years ago, programs that were established decades ago. And guess what the programs are? Let's give us let's uh, let's give us a few examples: the war on drugs, the war on poverty, the war on uh, on 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 criminals, and the war and the war and the war. And it's all these programs are on the war on this and the war on that, and the war on illegal immigration. The war it never ends. So where's the good? Well, it's designed to be uh, dividing. It's designed to capitalize 
on the misunderstanding of what's going on, and then the media makes mega billions. If I turn on the news and I watch the news for an hour, I will not see Roger the Squirrel uh, being showcased. I will see, unfortunately, children crying, jeeps blowing up, uh, heartache, and, 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 and endless, because it makes money. And if you're scared and you're confused, that's where they win. And confusion, someone told me this, I couldn't believe it. Someone says the, a person has the maximum chance of learning and growing if you're in a confused state. And I was like, how's that possible? Because you're questioning, because you're not sure, because usually the next move of a confused person is, I don't understand. That's a question. What, what does it mean? That's a question. Well, how do I do, deal with this? That's a question. That means you're thinking. But what they do is they add in a couple special ingredients to make sure you don't get it. It's called fear. It's called, uh, it's called, uh, control. Propaganda. That's right. It's called, let's make sure that you can't ask the question because you're too scared to ask. Yep. And that's where artificial intelligence is going to be the end of humanity if people do not educate themselves and do not take ownership of their mind and their intellect because your mother and your father gave life to you and you need to honor your parents, you need to honor yourself and you honor your family I and your friends. I couldn't say it better. That's exactly right. That's precisely right. And uh, and just keep in mind that propaganda uh, mm -hmm. does not deceive you. People say that you know you're being deceived by propaganda. No, propaganda was not to to, to create it to deceive you. It helps you to deceive yourself mm -hmm. because uh, when we all think the same, that means nobody's thinking at all, and therefore propaganda is out there for all the cattle. What the Jews call the Gentiles goy, G-O-Y, or G-O-Y hyphen E-M, goyim, which simply means, they say that it means people of the nations. But goyim actually uh, comes from a term uh, for human cattle. So <clears throat> it's pretty much unfortunate, but that's about the truth, is that we humans act like we're cattle and we're all out there chewing a cud and, and looking after the babies and taking care of the of the children and roaming around trying to find something to eat and doing what we normally do and that is get on a ramp and we're going to be have, be hitting the head with a with a hammer and then we'll be a hamburger tomorrow and so that's the way we humans think we just go along to get along and never question anything and again. When everybody's thinking the same thing, that means nobody's thinking at all. So this is why it's so important <clears throat> to look at the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that most people are too afraid or don't have time to do. And that's why I have always been promoting the idea of wake up and get a life and start doing some research on where things come from. Look at the etymology of words. My God, what a what a incredible study that is! When you find out the words that you use, where they come from, and what they mean, and and how we're being sucked into a whole system of thinking, never questioning or realizing somebody has put this whole world system that you live under. Somebody put it together before your grandmother was born. And therefore, we are still today, the more we change, the more we stay the same. We're still buying into and uh, and submitting our lives, our very spiritual and human life. We're committing it to follow the dictates of tyrants and mentally deranged morons and inbred uh, goofballs and criminals and psychos. Uh, and yet we, you know, never thought about it. We just don't question anything. We just go along to get along. Well, that's the same mentality that gave us uh, Nazi Germany. When uh, when the whole German nation <clears throat> fell into, I mean, uh, that's a whole extraordinary story too. Germany in the 1930s was one of the highest educated 
uh, technologically advanced, spiritually advanced uh, people on the earth was Germany. They gave us the great cathedrals, the great music, the great art, uh, all of their technology and, uh, and their, uh, the mechanics of the Germans were always superior. And people all over the world realize that out of Germany has come some of the greatest music, the greatest architecture, the greatest of everything. And yet, uh, with that, with that background that the Germans had, somebody like Adolf Hitler comes along and the whole country collapses and falls in line to follow the dictates of a, of a follower, of a leader, of a great leader. The whole country eventually molds itself to the thinking of one dictator. And so, uh, I'm just amazed how that happens because I've seen it now at 60, uh, at, at 76 years old. I've seen it now in my own country. I used to wonder how it was possible. Now I know how it's possible. I've lived through it. I'm actually at, at 76 years old. I have sat through and watched in the past 30 to 40 years the American people who once loved to brag about they were free and liberty and justice and that was the land of the free and the home of the brave. And today the American people, the majority of the American people have uh, quietly and uh, unceremoniously given up their freedom, their liberty, their, their thinking. They have uh, turned their back on liberty and freedom and justice. Uh, in order to, uh, into order to fit into society and be in compliance with the fascist government who will tell you what you can believe and what you can do and what you can think. And the American people go along with it. They just, they can't wait to put on a badge and go to work for the Department of Homeland Security or join the police department so you can get a gun and a billy club, and you can beat the flying hell out of anybody you want now, and you can do whatever you please to do. Why? Because you've got a badge, and that badge is a very special uh, badge of of, uh, of authority coming directly from Hefira in Berlin. So now you are, you now you're somebody. You never had a job in your life. You were worthless and couldn't get a job, but now you can work for the home, the Department of Homeland Security. Now you can really uh, push people around and make them and throw them, throw them in jail. You can make them crawl on their knees because now you've got a badge and you're carrying a gun. You're still mentally disordered and goofball, but now you've got the imprimatur of government behind you. And so I am frightened to death when I see my American uh, fellow citizens molding themselves to a fascist dictatorship, and they love it. You go to any, uh, go anywhere, watch the way the police look at people, the way they treat people. Go into any airport, or any bus station, anywhere where there's a public uh, transportation, and see how the uh, your fellow Americans living in your hometown who have got a job with the government see how those people are now treating their fellow man. It's, a, it's, it's, it's incredible how artificial intelligence, meaning that we humans do not have the ability any longer to think for ourselves. All we need to know is what to kiss and when. And you'll get a badge and you'll get a paycheck and you can carry a gun and you can be God now. You can be like Jehovah. You can be the absolute bottom line authority and can push people around, shoot them if you want, beat them up if you want. Why? Because there is no law. There's only, like the judges will tell you, there is no justice. There's just us. And well, so anybody, it's an yeah. incredible story of the artificial intelligence and how, what it has done to the human family. We can't think for ourselves, so we have to have artificial intelligence and uh I, the thing i i want to i forgot to mention earlier but i i thought was very pertinent is that the etymology of the word vatican uh it says mound or a hill but it's also it says on the online version it says it's a etruscan loan word which is another civilization the etruscans which you've already mentioned in the past but it's a loan word 
which means soothsayer, which basically it's a person who can foresee the future. And organized religion uh, needs to be able to see the future or else it can't stay in power. And it needs to be uh, in an environment where it has intelligence. It has uh, a gathering intelligence, you know, maybe through confession or maybe through um, community uh, responses. And everybody's have – I'm willing to bet anybody who's lived in the Western world will secretly on the inside chuckle a little bit when I say these two examples. The first one is you're at, you're at work and you meet somebody who just got promoted in your office, and you're wondering how in the world did that person get promoted. They're <laughs> late. They're, they're late. They, they, they don't have the right approach. They don't have a, uh, they have a bad attitude or they're, they're incompetent. Whatever it is that's not right, somehow they got promoted. Well, and the other thing, too, is uh, the other example is, you're watching TV and it's like a funny home videos and you see a guy on a bicycle on a, on a ramp and you already know what's going to happen. He's going to wipe out. Okay. And so he's going to wipe out. So, but you haven't actually seen the video, but somewhere in your mind on a deep subconscious level, you know, this guy's going to wipe out (laughs) and you're going to either laugh or you're going to feel sad or you're going to cringe when you see the person, you know, break their arm. But the reality is, is that if you set up an environment where you already know what's roughly going to happen and you already know that that person on the bike doesn't realize that that's not the best move because they're so conditioned. Yeah. And the person in the office, they just, they just repeat what they're told and they didn't, they didn't ask the, the wrong questions and they showed up and they did the, the, all the right things for the wrong reasons. They get promoted. It's, it's, so the thing is, is that the mindset has been so diminished. The in, in individual, development and thinking has been brought down to the lowest possible common denominator that you know what me too i if i had a the, if i had a multi-billion dollar environment i could see the future too just like anybody else who had that so uh ultimately uh if they're saying that they're for, they're soothsayers i'm not i'm not speaking on behalf of the vatican i'm just saying if that word is actually an etruscan loan word for a soothsayer uh, and they're able to see in the future, and they already they see all this turmoil and 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 uh, crises everywhere. Yeah, I pretty much could chalk up with with computerized and and uh, stuff. I could basically see roughly what's coming down the pipe, and it's not good. And the people who want to understand the significance of all these examples that I'm giving is just go on Amazon and buy yourself a, a an Echo device or an Alexa device where it's like a, a, a speaker where you just talk, you leave, it's on, it's, it's listening for your voice 24-7 when you're home and you're giving it orders. And then when you're not giving it orders, it's still listening to you and it's up, uploading your voice and your tone of voice and your frustrations and your joy and your secrets and everything all the way up into a computer. And it's going to remember that. And it's not going to discern. It's just going to take it all. And so when you're at the, when you're at your job, you're giving your, you're putting your best foot forward. You're showing that, you know, you're a good employee and you're not, you're not revealing all you, the, your little personal quirks of your personality. You're not, you're trying to look your best so you can move up and keep your job. Well, in the computer world, that's recording everything. It's recording all the part of your personality you don't want to show your new girlfriend or your new boyfriend or your sisters, your brothers, or your new employer. It's getting it all, and it's getting the dark side of our personality, and it's getting our biases, and it's getting our concerns. And and about 50 years from now, people are going to say, well, you know, there's wonderful applications for artificial intelligence that healed my grandmother. Yeah, it also had the algorithms to make sure she can't get insurance. But you don't know that, and you'll never know it because it's trillions and trillions and trillions of examples of real, unfettered human behavior that were recorded without your understanding, without you thinking about how you're behaving and how it might impact you, your neighbor, your children, your race, your planet. And... This is the major, major force of AI because AI is a military process. It's a military funded thing and it's an extension of basically the belief system that was there to help humanity guide itself through a difficult period, which is, you know, religion. 
And uh, this, again, this is just all my opinion. Some might, people might disagree with it, but I personally think that the human condition is up uh, for dismissal. It's, it's on its final leg. And if people do not understand that your behavior counts and it means something, and it, 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 it's going to take us into a very bad place. Oh, my God. I think everybody is beginning to suspect that that's where we already are, is in a very bad place. Uh, well, with the trillions of cameras, I say trillions, probably the millions of cameras all over the place, all the nightclubs, all the adult clubs, all the illegal illicit uh, drugs and uh, prostitution, human trafficking, all the crime, that's all being, re if it's not being recorded, eventually it's going to be recorded. And eventually when AI takes over, the light bulbs are going to have software in them. And that software is going to be able to communicate to your Internet of Things television and your Internet of Things speakers and your printer and your toaster. And it's not just going to find out if you like toast four times a day, it's going to be able to know everything about you. So, just understand that we are replacing parents portray as legal analog pre-electronic uh, 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 father, you know, which is the government of our country, which is, you know, there's there's very many good things about a country. Um, if it's well run and, and it's, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of good, you know, good people are trying to do good things, but we are creating a new mother and a new father, a new parent. And it's called AI. And AI doesn't have legitimate, actual caring. And see, if you're dealing with people who don't care, which humans, some humans don't care, now you're going to meet someone who doesn't care at all, ever. And people are not psychologically ready for that, to say, in 30 years from now, my children are going to be dealing with a computer that doesn't care. And it cannot care, and it never will care. It only will want to have itself maintain and sustain. And that's where the boot of, uh, was it uh, 1984? The, the, the boot's coming down on the face of a humor, something like that. Yep. It, it, it's not going to be a boot. It's going to be an <laughs> algorithm. And you'll never be, and if, there, if that algorithm ever makes a mistake because the, the input was wrong or it made some sort of error judgment, you'll never be able to contest it. Because it's like trying to, it's like trying to contest where, where was the error? You would you go bankrupt. You'll never win in court. It's an auto lose situation. So of the course. purpose is yeah. So the purpose of what I'm thinking is that we need to educate ourselves and we need to be examples of doing the right thing, trying to help our, ourselves, and then being the example to others. Because right now the example right now is take advantage of everybody and leave them for dead, rip them off, so that you can make it. Well, that that's going to run out. <laughs> And it's not it's not five or five thousand years from now. Well, you know, when you talk about artificial intelligence, etc., it puts me in mind of motion pictures. Hollywood's been telling you this for years. Remember, many years ago, back in the fifties, there was a movie called uh, "The Day the Earth Stood Still." Yeah. And remember the great robotic uh, creature that. Uh, uh, the the guy from from the other planet was telling the humans about this robot, yeah. and he said uh, it it has absolute control over us in in our world, and we you know, we just do what it's we we have designed this computerized monster to guide us on our planet so that it doesn't matter who you are on our planet the the, the government is the robotic power on the on our planet and uh, and it doesn't care who you are it doesn't care what sex you are it doesn't matter you are nothing more than a than a blip on a computer and the and then of course with uh 2001 space odyssey if you remember the astronaut uh you know had to crawl inside the computer how uh he had to crawl inside the computer and saw unplugging Mm -hmm. the different memory banks in the computer because the computer had taken over and decided it was going to do what it wanted to do whether the uh, uh, you know whether the astronaut or the uh, or the you know the earthly uh, operation yeah. wanted or not it, the computer decided it's going to do what it wants to do and you will conform and you will conform to what the computer wants 
And so that's the way the world is going. So I would say, and we only have a couple of minutes left, but what I would say is the one important point to this program you need to keep in mind is to always instill in your children and instill in other people to protect their own humanity, to protect your humanity from the incursions of of high uh, occult sciences and technology to ultimately do away with you and your humanity. And we know that uh, that Silicon Valley has been for years, I've been reading about it, uh, cross cross uh, connecting human uh, brain tissue and human tissue, uh, living tissue with computers. And I've been following that for a long time, for years. They've been talking about the high science of taking human tissue from a person and somehow or another joining it with uh, the technology of a computer, which ultimately, maybe a couple of hundred years from now, ultimately what they're wanting to do is have an entire human race connected directly to a supercomputer. Uh, which will decide who will do what and who will do when, and this way you don't have to worry about different uh, different uh, countries doing different uh, things and having wars and revolutions and violence around the world. Ultimately, in a couple of hundred years, uh, these scientists are looking at the possibility of being, uh, being able to computerize the entire damn planet. Well, I'm sorry to cut in very quickly. I want to say this because we have so little time left is that I not only do I agree with that, but I want to add to what you're saying is that um, there is just by – and this is – I'm being sarcastic and I say it's just by magical chance in the 1940s they have the first electronic computer uh, called ENIAC and they called it the Great Brain. And and then after that, they came out just by magical chance. We're going between one and two billion, and I guess basically they had the capability of saying, "Oh, if we're going to get up to seven or nine billion, we need to milk this." So we're going to come up. We're going to have to popularize, and we're going to create what we call subculture, and we're going to create trends that are going to help the humans prepare for the chip and for implement in, implanting. And so what did they do? They came out. They started off with something simple. They came out with tattooing, and I have nothing against tattooings. Nothing against piercings and nothing against plastic surgery, but those are the three trends that are leading our next generations to implants, and it's just going to become commonplace. And and you know you know and I'll say well that's all military industrial complex. Why? Because all the computers are made in where Silicon Valley. And what what are women and men getting implants with silicone, silicone breast implants? And they're seeing well we need. Hundreds of thousands of cases to see if the body rejects it, if the, what are all the possible outcomes so that the AI knows how down the road how to manage implant technology for medical. And the tattooing, you know, tattoos were not as common. Now all my, my friends have it, uh, you know, the, the, this commonplace and body piercings, you know, used to be almost unheard of. Now, uh, everybody's got it. So these people who run the show, the intelligence community, the government, they understand that they need to prep the minds of these people who are not thinking. And I don't mean by getting a tattoo, you're not thinking, but I'm just saying they're giving you what they want you to learn and popularize it. And so that you go into it. And uh, when well, you that was it, my point. That was my point. That, that that so many Americans and so many people in different countries will mold themselves. Right. They don't have to tell you uh, you really need to get a tattoo or you really need to do this or that. Uh, no, just get everybody doing it, and then uh, the the rest of the herd will all see it like the hundred monkey idea. Uh, with the hundred monkey, all of a sudden, all the monkeys are now doing the same thing. They're all getting the tattoos, or they're all voting Republican or Democrat, and they're all wearing the same clothes, and they're all thinking the same thing. And everybody seems to be worried about Paris Hilton and uh, and the football game. And so, eventually, the whole and damn entire human race will be uh, on its knees to a higher power that will tell us what's important and what's not and who to listen to and who not to listen to. And at that point, we have lost our civilization. And we have lost our country. We've lost our 
our, our industrial base. We've lost our money. We've lost our control of our country. We've lost our freedoms. And now the only thing in America left to lose is your mind. And that's why today this country has gone totally off the wall with murder, violence, drug addiction, alcoholism, drive-by shootings. Uh, the entire superstructure of Western civilization is now mimicking our bosses who have put us in this position. <laughs> 